Europeans oversaw this brutal traffic in human cargo, but they had many local collaborators. The organization of the slave trade was structured to have the Europeans stay along the coastlines, relying on African middlemen and merchants to bring slaves to them, said Toyin Falola, a Nigerian professor of African studies at the University of Texas at Austin. So you had people like this, come on, come on, I got them right here. Come on, come on, I got them, they all line up. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And you think the kings, and you think them were unaware, oh no, you just, no. Of course. So it was a whole business. The Europeans couldn't have gone into the interior to get the slaves themselves. The anguished debate over slavery in the U.S. is often silent on the role that Africans played. That silence is echoed in many African countries where there's hardly any national discussion or acknowledgement of this issue, end of quote. And this is from PRI, Public Radio International. There is a willful amnesia about the roles that we played in the slave trade, said Nat Amarte Filio, a local historian who's also a former mayor of Accra, Ghana's capital. Mm. The Europeans weren't going out and capturing Africans. They couldn't. They got sick and died from illnesses like malaria. Mm. Some African ethnic groups went into business warring with other groups so they could capture prisoners they sold as slaves to the Europeans. Amarta Filio says they were organized and intentional about it. To pursue slavery successfully, you need a highly organized group because somebody has to go out there, somebody has to locate the victims, somebody has to lead an army there, somebody has to capture them, transport them to the selling centers all the time, keeping an eye on them to make sure they don't revolt, and then sell them and move on, end of quote. The same Nigerian writer also wrote this for the BBC. Quote, my great grandfather, forgive me for not trying to pronounce his name, was what I prefer to call a businessman. From the Igbo ethnic group of southeastern Nigeria, he dealt in a number of goods, including tobacco and palm produce. He also sold human beings. He had agents who captured slaves from different places and brought them to him, my father told me. Mm. But get this, after this story, her father believes that his grandfather, her great-grandfather, ought not be judged by the standards of today because back in that time, slavery was commonplace all around the world and nobody had any moral objection to it, not really. And Africans didn't think of themselves as one common people. They thought of themselves as separate people, as separate nations. Still, my father does not believe that the descendants of those who took part in the slave trade should now pay for those wrongs. As he points out, buying and selling human beings had been part of many African cultures as a form of serfdom long before the first white people landed on our shores, end of quote. Mm. And she concedes that judging the past from the... So that means that they were slaves, people were buying and selling people before they even knew, of, like, who are these selling? Like, who are they? Yeah. This was a they thing. They were doing it amongst each other. Yeah. There, yeah. How do you think, I believe that, it, and that's been going on for a long time, I believe before these American lands, before anybody stepped on outside of the Indians, I believe they were, it was here, you know, if you could travel, you could, that was, I, I, and, and not saying that's a positive thing, it's a, it's a terrible thing, but that, but as I'm starting to learn and read a little bit of history, I start to see that that was a way of life, not something why we should be so focused on anger. Should focus on being, if we, if your ancestors were descendants of slaves like mine, should be one, you want to focus on being the richest man in your family. Yeah. The of today is problematic at best. It would be unfair to judge a 19th century man by 21st century principles. Assessing the people of Africa's past by today's standards would compel us to cast the majority of our heroes as villains, denying us the right to fully celebrate anyone who was not influenced by Western ideology. Igbo slave traders, like my great-grandfather, did not suffer any crisis of social acceptance or legality. Mm. They did not need any religious or scientific justification for their actions. They were simply living the life into which they were raised. 
That was all they knew. Into wow. Slavery. So this African writer, whose great grandfather bought and sold slaves, says, do not judge us by the prism of today's standards, but we're supposed to judge white people who did bad things in the past by the prisons of today's standards and extract money from people who were never slave owners and give it to people who were never slaves? As much as slavery is repudiated around the world today, prior to the 18th century, Thomas I know of no serious effort to abolish the institution anywhere. 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 Not in Africa, I, not, in, not oh, in the Arabian Not world. in Africa in the 21st century. Even in the antebellum South, most whites did not have slaves. The cost of one male adult slave was more than the average white person earned all year. So they weren't all living in terror with, the, with, with their plantations and all the rest right. of it. And what we're looking at is if slavery is something that happened to one race of people in one country, when in fact the, 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 the spread of it was around the world. In, in 1776, which is when Adam Smith published The Wealth of Nation, as mm -hmm. well as when the United States got started, he said that Western Europe is the only place in the world where there is no slavery. And even, in Western, even the Western Europeans had vast numbers of slaves in the Western in, Hemisphere, yes. but not in Western Europe itself. And so if you're going to have reparations for slavery, it's going to be the greatest transfer of wealth back and forth, uh, and, 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 and cross-hauling, as they say in, in the railroads. Because the, the number of, of whites, for example, who were enslaved in uh, North Africa by the Barbary pirates exceeded the number of Africans enslaved in the United States and in the American colonies before that. So that's how we, as black people, are still getting stuck, stuck in that narrative and st on our American land of anger, you know, frustration, you know, only white people get ahead. We stuck on that, but we don't have the education that this was a small, this was small numbers compared to what they, what they were doing in other places. And it was a thing and that's, that sucked all the way. But it's the difference between this is the way of life versus this just happened to some black people in, in America and forced us to out of our country to be an American slave. True. And I bet they were, on, they were more democratic. Together. When they got here on these lands. I know, but nobody is going to North Africa to ask for reparations because nobody is going to be fool enough to give it to them. Uh, here we have, we have intellectuals who can, who can imagine a different history from the rest of the world even though it's so similar to the rest of the world. Back to the Nigerian writer. Her father told her, quote, if anyone asks me for reparations, I will tell them to follow me to my backyard so that I can pluck some money from the tree there and give it to them, end of quote. So no reparations, says this writer, from Africa for the involvement in the slave trade by Africans but there ought to be reparations from Americans for being involved in the slave trade here? Can you say double standard? <clears throat> I'm looking forward to getting my invitation on the Don Lamont show. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. The full show is available to watch right now on Epoch TV. Just click. When I say that's enough education, to change your life now, you, if you go do and back it up with a little of your own reading, yeah, go back and get the facts yourself. Pretty much, because you think about it, Joy, he is absolutely right. Just but, like they showed you, I, I know that I don't. Well, I don't know. I take that back. I don't know if you saw that, but I remember. I don't remember. No, I I, I do remember seeing roots in history class. Did they do that when you were in school? I don't know about history class. I saw it. I don't know if I saw that at school. No, I, I saw it in history so. class. They did Roots, and we also um, saw um, Birth of a Nation. Okay. I and um, it teaches you, and I promise you, I don't care what nobody say. When I saw that, when the teacher showed that, it made me want to hate, it made me angry, and it made me had a distaste um, to a degree for white people. And even though my mom taught me different, my mom taught me, so I'm be, you know, just a little backstory. I think I've told you this before. My mom said, never, ever, Go at somebody at their race. She said when she was going, she was going, she was working at the bank and she retired from the bank. I love my mama. Um, and she was going through this transition when they were firing, letting, they were firing everybody at the bank. She said it was a Caucasian lady that said, no, not 
Evelyn. She said the black lady who was up in, in power was like, but she said again, not Evelyn. And then after that, she told me, she said, and from then on, she said, never go at a color because you don't know them because your color might not be the one that help you. Mm -hmm. And then I saw in New York, you know, I heard that from. And then later on, Kevin Gates and Lil Wayne. So when we start talking about how somebody is our, it, be, it might be our own people that be going against us, whereas the people that we talk about ain't that are oppressing, it might have been the one that saved your life. So you have to be mindful of that. And that's why I've never been about it by the color. No matter, even though it was taught to me that I was supposed to be about it, against the color. Well, I do say that information changes things. And this gives me a whole new perspective as to um, the reparation piece of it. So far as slavery and history, I was aware, you know, that we did sell ourselves into slavery. But not to the magnitude of how big it was, right? Well, what you mean? Like knowing that it was so big and it was, it was such an average thing. To... No, I knew slavery was going on all around the world. Okay, I yeah, got you. I, did, I learned that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not like a conversation we just have every, any day that we just talk about that. So. No, of course not. Yeah. It just brightens. With that information, what it does is it aligns you and makes you grind hard to live your life and be like, and know that ain't nobody oppressing you no more. Exactly. So. No, living my best life. No one's coming to save you. You got to get in and get it yourself. That's right. Period. So I love that. This was so educational. Y'all don't, don't know, man. Shout out to the people that um, I just, it was a gang of different, it's not one particular person that said to go look at Larry Elder. It was several people and Tom Sawyer. Mm -hmm. You saw Tom Sawyer on there and you see how packed education, packed. Yeah. So man, shout out, man. Like, comment, subscribe, man. Don't take a nosedive, but comment in the section below, man. We got some more for you, man. See one snapper, man. Love us. We love you. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next video. All right, y'all. Bye.